Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? What did you do today? Um, a little uh, stress with the with, with work. Oh, really? Really? What? What work? Yeah. What kind of work do you do? Um, I work at uh, a department of budget. Oh, so you're in finance. I love yes. finance. That's my speciality. And what do really? you do there? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> don't um, think don't don't think that I am the number one acquisitions manager <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I I work for the government. Okay. I I work with the budgets of the institution of the government. Government. Oh, really? Public institutions. Yeah. Well, maybe you can write me because I need help with that. I need to know what's going on with my situation. Maybe you can write me later and help me with that. Yes, you told me uh, about your, um, I don't know how do you say, about your declaration, right? Um, income tax report. Income tax report, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you told me. Uh -huh. Maybe we can talk about that later and you can help me. Okay, no problem. Please, thank you. Hey, Mirna Barahona, how are you? Very well, teacher, thank you. How was your day? Good, very nice. What did you do today? Did you go to work? Yes. What do you do? I am assistant accountant. Accountant assistant. Okay, yes, accountant assistant. Wow, so you do bookkeeping. Yes. So you're in the finance area. Yeah. Oh, I love the finance area. That's my speciality. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I love finance. I like my work. And what do you do? Uh, for this moment, it's a little busy because we, we make declaration of taxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last day is in two May two. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. I love finances. Thank Did you. Did you study fi uh, finances, teacher? I studied business administration oh, okay. in the United States oh. in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So I love business. Um, I love making money. <laughs> I love and sales. Do you work or in, in that sector? Well, I work as an acquisitions manager. Do okay. you know what is acquisitions manager? Um, I don't know exactly. Basically, I negotiate the prices for homes in the United States. Okay. You know, I call the client. I ask the client how much. Like uh, real estate, no. Real estate, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. you, maybe you um, make a lot of money in, in that sector, right? Well, uh, I love my job. <laughs> 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 yes. And I love teaching English. 
but I I heard that the house, the, the price of the house in, in Houston are um, more cheap or are, are cheaper than the other state. For example, my mom lives in Washington DC, so the cost is higher. Correct. That is exactly correct. Why do you think that a lot of companies in New York, California are moving to Florida, to yeah, Texas, to Nevada, Oklahoma? My, my market is Oklahoma. Yeah. So that's my market. You know, that's what I do. I call and I analyze if the prices fit okay repeat uh, repeat after me repeat after me this is my motto when it comes to business repeat there is no poverty there is no poverty everybody repeat there is no poverty there is no poverty, no poverty. No poverty. In, profit. in profit in profit in profit in profit. Okay, what does that mean? That means that if you have an opportunity to have $10 and convert $10 into $100, do it. Yeah. Do it. You know, that's my philosophy. So yeah. my speciality is identifying those contracts that are good deals, right? The client is selling for 300,000. I can buy for 450,000. That's, oh that's a good deal. That's a $150,000 profit. So it's, you know, it's it's easy. Money. And you still live in El Salvador, right? I live here by La Torre Futura. Oh, but you work uh, at the United States? But my job is in the USA. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. That's <laughs> a good idea for, for the other person. Yes, everybody can do it. Yeah. Everybody can do it. Everybody in El Salvador. Maybe we, we say we don't have uh, jobs in El Salvador, but that is a good opportunity. Yes, and it's easy. It's easy money, easy money. Sure. Hey, colleagues. Do you need an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> two, please, two. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, right now, no, <laughs> I'm, fully, I'm fully booked. I'm fully booked. No, I mean I I'm I'm really on the call. Uh, my day does not stop. You know, from the moment that I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, uh, I don't have time. Uh, you know, for to waste. I always work out. I always, you know, go jogging in the morning, lift weights in the afternoon, take care of my body. I always do that. Eat a clean diet. But my my agenda is like boom classes, boom training, boom tasks, boom follow ups. Man, all day doesn't stop. Yeah, you know. But I like it. I like it. Like it. They said that uh, success has a price. So Yes. It's, it's not free, right? You got to pay the price. If you want to be the boss, you got to pay the cost. Repeat. If you want to be the boss. If you want to be the boss. If you want to be the boss. You got to pay the cost. You got to pay the cost. That's right. For example, if you want to be with a lot of muscles, right? big muscles you gotta live heavy that's the price if you want to be successful you gotta study practice learn 
prepare, look for that opportunity and it's gonna come to you. But you gotta pay the cost. You gotta put in the work. I you heard the, a phrase that said, uh, dream big, work hard and make it happen. That's right, no excuses. Yeah. Period. No excuses. Okay. All right, guys. Let's do this one more time. Who can tell me what you remember from yesterday's class? What did we talk about? What did we go over? Tell me. Anybody. All right, let's say Enrique hasn't said anything today. Enrique, can you hear me? Hello, Enrique, are you there? Okay, Enrique's not there. Hmm, let me see. It, Roxana, can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. How are you, Roxana? Pretty good, thanks. That's awesome. I'm happy to hear that. Can you tell me a little bit about what you remember from well, we study or we answered mm -hmm. the middle term, middle yeah. midterm, midterm, yeah, midterm. <laughs> uh huh. Uh -huh. And what were some of the topics that you remember from the midterm? Oh, Kai War mm -hmm. and re listening exercise. Mm -hmm. um, reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Exercise. That's right. From the reading. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about you need to remember about when you use gerunds infinitive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. comprehension about reading mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. correct so these are topics that do you feel that you guys understand these topics better now yes i understand Okay. How do you guys feel with these topics? Do you have any questions about section one, section two questions right now so that we can review? In my case, I have problems with the moral teacher. Maybe uh, practicing, but I have problems to differentiate the, or, or to know the different. Mm -hmm. How to use it. Okay. Okay, so we're going to review modals. Okay. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Questions or doubts from the modals or the verbs? Okay. So for the modals, you have different types of modals. For example, you have the modal of obligation, right? This modal is used, for example, to express things that you must do. For example, in my case, my goal is to be successful. What is my obligation to be successful? I must study to be more successful. Or I can say I have to study to be more successful. Why? If you learn new things, you add new value. You know more, you're worth more. Very simple. 
Um, if I want a healthy body, I must work out every day, or I can say I have to work out every day, right? So that's the modal of obli obligation. Now you have the modal of suggestion. For example, if I say to you, you say, oh, I want to lose weight. You should modal exercise. Or I can say, you should diet. So that's giving a suggestion, right? Just an idea. It's not something that you have to do, but it's my suggestion, my advice. Or you can say, you can go running. Or you could go running. Okay. Now, if you want to express the modal of possibility, for example, you say, hey, what do you guys want to do Friday night? And somebody says, ah, we could go to the movies, right? You can go to Cinemark, Cinepolis. Uh, I think that's the only two movie theater brand here in San Salvador. So that's a possibility, whichever one is a possibility. Hey, let's order some food. Oh, we could order some nachos, right? Imagine it's a Friday night and you don't want anything healthy. You just want to break your diet and you just want to, you know, enjoy yourself. We could order some nachos. That's a possibility or some hamburgers or some tacos or some pizza, whatever, something that you're going to enjoy. A michelada. <laughs> or, you know, I want to do something this weekend. Me too. Let's go out. Where do you want to go? We could go to surf city and eat seafood. Those are all possibilities. We could go to Galaxy Bowling. Right, all the possibilities are there. We could go to Chuck E. Cheese. Right, San Salvador is like little USA, little Houston. It has everything. So, or if you want to express, what's the other modal? Can somebody give me a modal? Teacher, okay. yeah. when we use may or might? Uh, may or might is when you are on decisive undecisive right hmm i don't know i might watch morbius or doctor strange <laughs> Dr. Strange. Or you can say, 
I may watch Morbius or Doctor Strange. Right, I don't know. I don't know. I want to watch both of them. You can't. You need to make a decision. Okay, okay. So you can use may or might for whatever. It's the same meaning. The meaning is not this different. It's the same meaning. Okay, another question? Another question? Nobody? No, teacher. It's okay for me. Okay, okay. I mean, there are more. We could, you know, we could be here all night talking about modals, right? There's, there, those are not the only modals that there are. There are a whole lot more. But, you know, you just got to know how to use them, how to change them, in what context to use them. You know, just do your digging, do your research, get in there. Everything is there. Remember, the more you dip your finger in the water, the wetter you get. The more you research, the more you investigate, the more you practicing, the more you, that you're in it, the better you get. All right, guys, today we're going to go ahead and look at section three. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on here. Give me just a second. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. So now we are going to start section three. For section three, we are going to be looking at relative and non relative clauses. By the end of this lesson, participants will know how to identify and use relative and non-relative clauses. Any questions? Any questions? All right, let's watch the video. Welcome to a new section. Can everybody hear? To give essential or optional information. Can everybody about hear? Someone or something? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay, yes. we're going to play the video two defining times. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Take notes. A defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun. New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origins to Africa. A non-defining relative clause gives optional information about a noun. Notice the use of commas. Seoul, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, is well known for its shopping. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. Defining relative clauses function like adjectives because they add information about a noun or a noun phrase. They must always immediately follow the noun they describe. They give essential information about the noun. People like to go to restaurants that have good food. Non-defining relative clauses. Non-defining relative clauses also describe a noun, but the information they give is not essential. They are set off by commas. That restaurant which has good food is the most popular one in town. Just to help you out a bit, look at the following charts. They are used in defining and non-defining relative clauses. Come up with your own sentences and ask your teacher to check them out for you.
Welcome to a new section. Are you ready to give essential or optional information about someone or something? We hope you still remember how to do it. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. A defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun. New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origins to Africa. A non-defining relative clause gives optional information about a noun. Notice the use of commas. Seoul, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, is well known for its shopping. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. Defining relative clauses function like adjectives because they add information about a noun or a noun phrase. They must always immediately follow the noun they describe. They give essential information about the noun. People like to go to restaurants that have good food. Non-defining relative clauses. Non-defining relative clauses also describe a noun, but the information they give is not essential. They are set off by commas. That restaurant which has good food is the most popular one in town. Just to help you out a bit, look at the following charts. They are used in defining and non-defining relative clauses. Come up with your own sentences and ask your teacher to check them out for you. All right, welcome back, welcome back. Any questions right now? Any welcome questions at this session. moment? Are you ready to give essential or optional information about someone or something? Questions, questions, questions. Because you still remember how to do it. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. A defining relative... Okay, no questions. That's okay. So... What is the difference between a defining relative clause and a non-defining relative clause? What is the difference? The difference is that the defining relative clause specifies and gives important information about the main subject. You have two subjects. New Orleans is one subject and people is another subject. So you have two subjects, New Orleans, and people, what is the main idea? What is the main subject, the main topic? What is it? The main topic New is Orleans. New Orleans is a city. So what happens specifically in that city? People go to celebrate <laughs> Mardi Gras. So this relative clause where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras is giving me important information about New Orleans. That's important because Mardi Gras is the only, uh, New Orleans is the only city that people celebrate Mardi Gras. There is no other city in the United States where the people celebrate Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is a French traditional party, like uh, Vacaciones Agustinas in El Salvador, like the Brazilian Carnival, right? It's a cultural thing. So it's very important information. If I say to you, for example, Mama Chus, do you know Mama Chus? Do you know Mama Chus? No teacher. Yes. 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 Okay. Mama Chus. 
is a restaurant where I eat like a beast. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? That means that when I go to Mama Chu's, I know that I am going to eat out of control because <laughs> it's delicious. I love it. Okay, so that's specific. Eh, Salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origins to Africa. Okay. Salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origins to Africa. I don't think so. I don't think El Salvador has its origins to Africa. I think we probably have more origins to Spain. However, you know, the history has been twisted. Um, I could say Salvador or El Salvador. El Salvador is famous for pupusas and eh, salsa. Oh no, cumbia, right? Cumbia or merengue? Or salsa? Cumbia, 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 sabrosa cumbia. cumbia, por ti yo bailo, hasta el amanecer, cumbia, sabrosa cumbia, ya yeah, es cumbia, en cumbia, El Salvador is famous for pupusas en cumbia, that come from Spain, I imagine. I don't know, I'm inventing here, right? So do you understand the idea? Yes, teacher. Okay. Now, now we're going to look at Hi, a... Wait. Hi? No, Anna? sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, a non-defining relative clause gives optional information about a noun. Notice the use of the commas. What does that mean? That means that that is optional, right? It's not important. It's only additional information. For example, uh, if I say to you, English, which is an international language, is spoken all over the world. English, then I put a comma, which is an international language, and then another comma, is spoken worldwide. So what is the main idea? The main idea is English is spoken worldwide. Mm -hmm. That's the main idea. The relative clause, which is the non-defining, non-important, only extra information, not necessary, which is an international language. But the main idea, the important thing here is English is spoken worldwide. Not important. It, that's not important. What's important is that is spoken. English is spoken worldwide. That's the main idea. Mm -hmm. Right. What is the subject? The subject is English. English. That's the subject. Right. If I say to you, there are many temples and shrines in Kyoto. That's the main idea. That's the main clause. 
the non-defining relative clause is, which used to be the capital of Japan. That's not important. The important thing is that the main idea here is that temples and shrines are in Kyoto. I'm trying to emphasize that in this sentence. If I say to you, for example, there are many restaurants on Paseo, oops, Paseo Escalon. That's the main idea, right? Which I visit on Fridays. What's the main idea in this sentence? There are many restaurants on Paseo Escalon. There are many restaurants. That's right. That's the main idea. That's my focus. What's my non-defining relative clause? Which I visit on Fridays. Friday. Which I visit on Fridays. Does that make sense to you? Mm. Okay. So basically, uh, in Spanish, in Spanish, uh, if I want to use a subordinate clause, New Orleans is a city. New Orleans es una ciudad mm -hmm. donde la gente celebra Mardi Gras. So, donde la gente celebra Mardi Gras es información importante. Give me one second, guys. One second, please. Okay. New Orleans. New Orleans. Is a city. Where? Montreal is All right, the next one. Salvador Where? is famoso por comida y oh, música no. que tiene su origen en Africa. ¿Cuál es la idea principal? Salvador es famoso por su comida y música. Que identifica algo específico de Salvador, de la comida, la comida y de la música que tiene su origen en África. Este es el, aquí el relative clause no es opción porque identifica algo importante sobre el sujeto. Okay. Aquí no. So, que fue host alfiltrión de los Summer Olympics en 1988 es muy conocido por eh, los malls su shopping so, la idea principal aquí es Seoul es conocido por sus malls el shopping which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics esto es información extra este no es mi énfasis Eso es algo que yo quise tirar por ahí. Por ejemplo, tú dices, eh, el cliente, que a mí me cayó la comisión, por cierto, <risa> es buena paga. ¿Cuál es la idea principal? El cliente es buena paga. Es buena paga. ¿no? Es buena paga. Pero yo como, ah, dije yo, ah, para que vean que sí saco comisiones, digo que es el que yo jalé. <risa> Pero el emphasis es el cliente buena paga. The client, which mm -hmm. I got the commission, is a good payer. All right. La otra. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto. Hay muchos templos y shrines son como cosas, eh, estatuas mm -hmm. y cosas para dioses en Kyoto. 
que antes era la capital de Japón. So, la idea principal aquí es que hay muchos templos y estatuas a dioses en Kioto. Esa es la idea principal. ¿Qué fue la capital de Japón? Es algo como extra. En El Salvador hay muchas ruinas. ¿Cuáles yo he visitado? ¿Cuál es la idea principal? El Salvador has many ruins, which I have visited. ¿Cuál es la idea principal? El Salvador hay muchas ruinas. That's right. Yes. So, que yo he visitado es extra. Ok. Vamos a escribir okay. tres ejemplos con los defining relative clauses y tres ejemplos con non-defining relative clauses. Los vamos a escribir aquí abajo en el discussion forum. Puede escribir los mismos ejemplos que su pareja. You're going to have five minutes. Ready? Go. Marvin. Okay, I don't know if, if someone can uh, uh, I will share the, the screen. Okay, thanks. Can you see? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, um, we have to make examples, right? Three examples for each clause, non-defining and non-defining. Okay. Uh, can we start with the with the defining? Okay. Yes. Tell me one per one. Mm, for example, my brother, who is an engineer, lives in San Salvador. That is defining. Yeah, because I have two two brother, but but. My brother, he, 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 that is an engineer, lives in San Salvador. But I, I see the I don't know. ideas. <laughs> mm, I think defining is only one idea. No, you need to use both two subjects. And you explain about the first subject. Mm. For example, New or Orleans is a city when people go to celebrate no, 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 no. You explain about about the city. Okay, okay, tell me. But I don't know. But so you, 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 you have another example? Why your example? No, tell maybe, example? no, tell me about the, the example. Who is an engineer? Who is an engineer lives in San Salvador. Okay. 
Number two, Javier. I think um, an example. I sell a guitar that has no warranty. Sorry, I can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, what is the example? I think an example, I say a guitar that has no warranty. A guitar? Yes, I said a guitar that I has no warranty. O sea, vendí una guitarra, pero sin garantía. Podría ser que... Lo interesante sería de que el agregado sería no tiene garantía. Oh, no, uh, garantía. Can you spell garantía? Eh, no. Guarantee. 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 Like double G, E, like I think. Double E at the, uh, at the end. Like w, this? No, no. Double W. No. Double W. No. No. Is. I can. I, I want to spell. Okay. And. Non defined, defined, non defined it will be uh, holy week, holy week, uh, oh, Easter is known as a holy week. As Holy Week, no. Maybe, will be. I don't know if Easter, which is whist, maybe like that. Easter, which is a uh, American American celebration, is well known in El Salvador as a Holy Week. No, no as a Holy Week. Domingo de Resurrección es as a uh, raising Jesus raising, creo. Puede ser algo así. No, I don't know. Ah. No sé. Hey, what's going on, Marvin Calix? Ana Pinera, can somebody give me an example, please? One example. I did one, but I don't know if I am correct. Okay, let me check it out. Uh, Easter, which is an American celebration in El Salvador, is well known as racing. Excellent. That's perfect. That's perfect. Good job, Ana. Okay. Anna, select somebody. Uh, Roxana. Roxana, give me an example. All right. Somebody else. Anybody? But my example was was on on the fin and the fighting or the fighting. Undefining. Undefined. That's right. Easter, which uh -huh. is an American holiday, is popular in El Salvador. The main mm -hmm. idea is Easter is popular in El Salvador. The mm -hmm. unident unidentifying clause is it's an American holiday, but that's not important. Mm -hmm. What's important is that Easter is celebrated in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Another example, somebody. Anybody? Me, teacher. All right. El Salvador is a famous country for his places where people like to visit. Perfect. Perfect. What's the main idea? What's the main idea? Is famous for his pieces. Which people like to visit. Excellent. Okay. The main idea is El Salvador is famous for its beaches. The unidentifying clause is which is famous. Good. Okay. For the next one, we are going to move forward and do the knowledge check. Here, you are going to identify if the sentence gives you a relative clause, then rewrite the same sentence and commas where necessary. Please work with a different partner. Knowledge check. <laughs> okay, okay let's see the Very first well. one do you, do you have a okay the first one yeah me too second one can we read the the answer if you want okay Bangkok, which is the capital of thailand has many excellent restaurants and market. Mm -hmm. Okay, number two. To Hong Kong. Do you have, was, have the correct? Yes, I have. Okay. okay. Hong Kong was a British colony until 1997, when it was returned to China. Only one comma. Only one comma. Uh -huh. okay. okay, number three. I don't have the correct. Okay, I did. Okay. I do my did my thing. <laughs> okay, it says Busan is a busy port city that is located in South Korea. I understand, but I'm not really sure that is undefined then. Yeah. Because it's a busy port city, it's not important. So we have to use a comma. Mm, okay. But I don't know why the comma is there because I can use commas neither in Spanish. Busan is a busy port city, comma, that is located in South Korea, Korea. Pero no sé ni por qué va a ir la coma, la verdad. After city. After, let me see. Ajá. Uh -huh. Porque en las de definición eh, no van coma, ¿verdad? No. Uh -huh. So is there la coma y, y sale bien. Yeah. Okay. Porque es una sola oración, no sé. What has correct? What are all the other that mm -hmm. you have? Number six. No, number four. Okay, I have number six. So let's. Ah, see. it's correct. Number, number six. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Give me number six. 
And number four, do you have number four? No, no, I can't. Oh, what is the other? You, you say that you have three? One, two, three. One, two, three, and three, what is the comma? Uh, after city, after port, port city. But, but it's incorrect for me. Ah, de verdad. Why, yeah. Y el punto del final? Yeah, with the point. Maybe, maybe algún espacio. Okay, let's see. Busan. Is a busy port city, comma. Yeah. That is located, located in South Korea. In South Korea. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's correct. One of the world's most popular cities. Popular, popular cities. Yeah. Popular Teacher. cities. Yeah. Teacher. Teacher, we have a problem with the What's number three. Up? What's number up? four. Number four. Okay. Number four. Okay. We okay. three. We, we three have the same problem. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which one? Number four. Number four. Number four. Bogota, which is situated in Cesar, Colombia, has frequently a change. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share it with you on the chat. Okay, thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. That was number four, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, number four. Okay, let's check that out. You got it? Yes, teacher, we got it. Okay. All right, all right. Is everybody finished? Almost. Yes, teacher. Okay. Time is up. So if you are not finished, that's going to be your homework. And then tomorrow we are going to check. Okay. You can continue working with your partner on WhatsApp. If your partner, if you were working together, you can write them on WhatsApp and share the information with the same partner. Okay. 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 See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye bye. Okay. See you later. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.